So in learning target 3.4, we need to be able to balance a chemical equation. An equation is balanced when there are equal numbers of atoms for each element on both sides of the equation. So, let's take a look at this specific example. Now, I'm going to start by dividing this in half. And then we want to start by actually taking kind of an inventory of the atoms on both the reactant side and the product side. So if I look on the reactant side, it looks like I have one Al atom. Looks like I have three Br atoms. Looks like I have two potassium atoms, one sulfur, and four oxygen. And on my product side, I have two aluminum atoms, one bromine atom, one potassium atom, three sulfur atoms, and 12 oxygen atoms. So, we can see here that the number of atoms for each element are not equal on both sides. So I'm going to start by drawing a 2 in front of the Al, Br3. I did that because I see that I only have one aluminum on the left side and on the product side I had two. So I wanted to double the amount of aluminum on this left side of the equation. So now I have two aluminum atoms and I also have changed the amount of bromine. I have six bromine atoms. Now. Although I did now match the number of aluminum on each side, you can see that it threw off our bromine. And I now have six bromine on the reactant side, and I only have one bromine on the product side. So because of that, I'm gonna actually put a six in front of this compound so that I now have six bromine atoms. And I also have to take note that that changed my number of potassium atoms from one to six. So I currently have balanced the aluminum and the bromine atoms, but it still is visible that my potassium, my sulfur, and my oxygen are not balanced. Now, when you're balancing chemical equations, you need to think mathematically. If you look at these numbers, four and 12, 1 and 3, and 2 and 6, you see a common theme, that each of these numbers multiplied by 3 gives us the number on the right. So you should be thinking that right up here before this compound K2SO4, we're going to actually add a coefficient of 3. And when we do that, we need to update our inventory. And instead of having two potassium atoms, we now have six. Instead of having one sulfur atom, we now have three. And instead of having four oxygen atoms, we now have 12. And if we can compare the numbers, it looks like we have six potassium atoms on each side. We have three sulfur atoms on each side, and we have 12 oxygen atoms on each side. So it looks like this is now balanced because we have an equal number of atoms for each element on both sides of the equation. 
and our final coefficients are 2, 3, 6, and we can assume the last coefficient is still 1. So take a few minutes to complete these two individual examples, filling in the coefficients so that you have correctly balanced the equations below. When you're done, resume watching the video to check your work. So, just to check your work on these two individual examples, our final coefficients, excuse me, for number 1, or A, are 4, 3, and 2, and our coefficients for B here are 3, 4, 3, 1, and 2. Um, and if you look back, and I'll just erase that, you can see in B, you can see that we have a balance between the silver, the AG, there are four hydrogen atoms on each side here as well, the nitrogens each have four, and the oxygens have 12 each, so these are balanced correctly in both A and B.